A report on the education sector is warning of a crisis at the pre-primary level of learning, which will likely spawn dire lifelong consequences and exasperate Uganda's wealth inequality, among us the lower ranks of society. Authored by Human Rights Watch and Initiative for Social and Economic Rights, the report is titled Lay a Strong Foundation for All Children, Face as a Discriminatory Barrier to Pre-Primary Education in Uganda. It reveals that fewer than 1 in 10 pre-primary children aged 3 to 5 are enrolled in a former pre-primary school and 60% attend no school at all. The children who never go to pre-primary never catch up to their peers in life. So that means that the inequality is starting at an early age and it continues throughout the life cycle. Currently, the government is not providing any public pre-primary education, which is often referred to as nursery. Uh, the Education Act of 2008 in section 10, subsection 2, leaves the responsibility of financing for pre-primary education that many people call nursery to uh, parents or guardians and then uh, the implementation, the deliver of it to uh, private actors. So what that means is that because there is no government provision at all, is that uh, regulation is very difficult and everyone charges as they wish. So, and because of those charges, you find that many people are left out, especially the poor and marginalized. If a learner has undergone a nursery school or preschool, their level of cognition will be higher than those that have not. And the fact that uh, as a country, developing is challenged by having its own enrollment in primary schools, mm -hmm. achieve the best education that there is, it means that the problem is still with us. But the beauty of it is that uh, through continued engagement, advocacy and push, there is now a policy for early childhood education, care and support. Families have to fork out large sums of money to offer pre-primary education at private nurseries charging exorbitant fees in a country where about 30% live below $1.77 a day. Uganda has the second youngest population in the world whose median age is 16. According to the report, the astronomical tuition charges can reach as high as 1,750,000 Ugandan shillings, which is the equivalent of $462 or more per child in a single term across nurseries in Kampala. For a full school year, three times fees for just one child at this rate represent more than two years' wages for an average person in paid employment in Uganda and exceeds the annual tuition for many programs at Uganda's leading university, Makerere University. The fees are really prohibitive because we have done this research and found that there are people that are charging fees that are compa comparable or more to university fees. I'll give you an example. When you look at Makere University, which is the largest public institution of learning, higher learning, Bachelor of Economics is around 1.5 million. Education is slightly over 1 million. You look at civil, mechanical, electrical engineering, they are 1,750,000 in that range. But there are nursery schools that are charging 1,750,000 and more. And why it is more expensive for nursery is that you're talking about three terms. The tuition varies with parents in rural backwaters such as Nakapiripit, Karamoja subregion paying as low as 5,000 shillings per child per term. This means that as a result of the high cost of pre-primary education in Uganda, several children miss out on learning, which is critical for laying the foundation of better education outcomes and high quality early years provision, particularly benefits children from low income backgrounds. With growing income disparities, children from low income and rural families are more likely to miss out on pre-primary education. This is on the basis that private pre-primary schools are concentrated in urban areas with higher income families where schools are more easily guaranteed adequate income. In 2019, the report indicates 
The peer-adjusted net attendance rate in schooling of five-year-olds in Uganda was more than 17% higher for children in urban areas than in rural areas and 49% higher for those in the richest quintile than those in the lowest income quintile. More than half of children in the poorest 20% of households never attend a day of pre-primary. The report indicates that children who miss out on pre-primary do not perform as well in primary school as their peers who attended pre-primary and are more than twice as likely to repeat grade 1 at the primary school level. They are more likely to drop out of school entirely. Children who miss out on these fundamental skills may never catch up to their peers. According to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, Educational inequalities start early in life and disadvantages accumulate over their lifestyle. What color is this? Yellow. 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 Put up your hand. Early childhood learning has profound long-term benefits for children's cognitive and social development, their health, future educational attainment and employment, and other opportunities later in life. The pace of brain development is at its highest in the first years of life, so this period represents a critical opportunity to make a positive difference in children's lives. Pre-primary education also mitigates inequalities among children from families of different incomes and contributes to countries' economic development. Access to pre-primary education improves employment prospects and earnings resulting in increased tax revenues and GDP. Between 1980 and 2021, public expenditure on education accounted for 50% of global economic growth and 40% of extreme poverty reduction. A 2023 cost-benefit study of pre-primary education in Uganda concluded that investments in early childhood have the greatest rate of return of any human capital intervention. In Uganda, Every skilling invested in pre-primary education can bring up to Ugandan shillings 16 in benefits, including improved lifetime earnings, new employment opportunities, and reduced primary school repetition rates. Greater access to pre-primary schooling also increases the employment and income of parents by allowing them, particularly mothers, to enter or re-enter the workforce earlier. Per capita, Sierra Leone's GDP is half of Uganda's and yet they are investing more than 20% of their national budget in education compared to Uganda, which invests only 8%. So I think if we look and see that a poor country like Sierra Leone, that is much poorer than Uganda, can do this for its children, then surely Uganda can as well. The report recommends that the Ugandan government should ensure that all children enjoy free, quality education and inclusive education, including making adequate investments in its education budget and offer at least one year of pre-primary education, compulsory and free for all children. The African continent, I think, is particularly useful because there are other countries in Africa that have done this. Um, Ghana, for example, has offered two years of free and compulsory pre-primary education for every child since 2008. Benin has offered two years of free pre-primary since 2006. Gabon offers three years of free pre-primary education. In 2022, Madagascar adopted a new law that guarantees one year of free and compulsory uh, education. In line with the, the low levels of UPE, which should be improved. So when we add the burden of having the pre-primary or early childhood development again hipped on the load that government has to deliver, we are likely to suffocate the service delivery paradigm. So to us, what should be done is to invoke that spirit that promotes an honest and clear public-private partnership. This is in tandem with Uganda's Vision 2040 and international human rights law, which compels states to take steps to progressively realize their economic, social and cultural rights, including the right to education.